In one of the first conversations Gerald and I had in planning this Christmas project, Gerald brought forth an idea he had about opening the entire thing with the melody of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and letting that grow into an epic prelude. And so, a few months later, when we all arrived at Abbey Road and it was time for the session to begin, the first song we got to hear was this prelude. And I'm gonna tell you, it was epic. One of the songs I got the opportunity to sing on the Christmas in London album uh, was the song Carolyn Caroling. And this is a song that really is a part of everybody's Christmas. We hear it every year, but it's not one that I ever dreamed that I would get to record and much less along with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra in London to stand there at Abbey Road Studio to listen to those musicians play this magical music, only the way that they can play it is, uh, well, it'll go down as an experience unmatched in my lifetime musically. And uh, this song also really tells what we did on this album. It's an album that's full of traditional Christmas carols. So we caroled our way right through this album. Really am believing that everybody who gets to hear this song, it's going to uplift your spirits, it's going to make you happy, and it's going to make you smile and bring back a lot of beautiful memories of Christmas. What I love about our cut of Angels from the Realms of Glory is the majestic feel of it. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. And I think about what it felt like to stand there at Abbey Road Studios and listen to this incredible orchestra in this huge room play this majestic song. And is, there's just a formality to it. There's just a, there's a, uh, a worshipful attitude with the song. 
and it's calling everyone. It's, I think it's the third cut on the Christmas in London project. It's calling everyone to the manger. Come and worship. Come and worship Christ, the newborn King. Uh, and how the angels uh, were there proclaiming creation's story. Uh, and now they're inviting us to this beautiful cradle of the King. Oh, come and worship the King. What a great thought. Holy Night is one of the greatest classic Christmas songs of all time, and it's been sung by some of the most powerful vocalists of all time down through the years. But when Gerald wanted to do O Holy Night on this album, he said, I want to do it in more of a soft, laid-back feel, uh, more of a meditative feel to really think about the holiness of that night, kind of like a Nat King Cole style. And I was really excited about that because I, I love that style of that song. But then shortly before we were going to record it, he said, I've got an idea. I want to add the last verse of In the Bleak Midwinter to O Holy Night. Because he said, I think it just fits perfectly. And the message of that last verse is so powerful of Bleak Midwinter. And so whenever we put it all together and whenever I heard the orchestra do it and Trey's arrangement of it, and then we put the vocals in there, wow, it creates such a powerful moment without ever getting big and bombastic. And so uh, I think it's a great arrangement, great idea, and I was very excited to get to sing this one. If I were a shepherd I would bring a lamb If I were a wise man I would do my part What then shall I give him I will give my heart I can't think of a more fitting Christmas carol to record with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra than Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Its melody is very grand and majestic. And also this Christmas carol originated in England. But most importantly, the message of this Christmas carol is as relevant today as it's ever been. Mild he lays his glory by, Born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth and born to give them second birth. So with the multitude of the heavenly host, we can proclaim glory to the newborn king. Hail the heavenborn prince of peace. Hail the son of righteousness. Light and life to all he brings.
Silent Night is a classic Christmas song, and uh, I must confess, when Trey and Gerald told me the uh, the arrangement style of this and how they just wanted it kind of a laid back, uh, it feels like a lullaby, like you're just kind of standing near the cradle of the Lord singing. It's it's so reverent. The strings that Trey wrote for this are just beautiful, and it forced me as a singer to really think about these words because of the spacing of the lyric within the body of the music here. And when I started singing that last verse, it just focuses on Christ is the Lord and uh, the radiant beams from thy holy face, the dawning of redeeming grace. It's all right there in the cradle. It's all in the manger, the precious gift of God. And it was such a joy to sing this song in this style. The guys will tell you that I picked songs for the album. The reality is I went to them and said, here's what I'm thinking. Is there any song you would like to do in particular? And the only guy that spoke up was John. And he said, I would love to do What Child Is This? And I said, why? He said, I remember my dad singing that song in church every Christmas and I would love to do it just to honor my dad so uh, it is a special cut on the album and you can hear the emotion in John's voice when he sings it everybody will pick on it and Trey knew exactly how to treat it musically so it is a special song
If you were to ask me to point out one song that really puts the majesty of Abbey Road on display, it would be We Three Kings, because uh, no other song on this record is going to uh, showcase the room that this was recorded in like We Three Kings. That room at Abbey Road, Studio One at Abbey Road is the biggest room there, and uh, the room itself is like an instrument. Mm -hmm. where instruments just sound different in that room. Instruments that don't even normally move you find a way to move you at Abbey Road, right? Like the timpani roll, when I heard that the first time at Abbey Road, it was just so epic there. And uh, We Three Kings, there are moments um, like when you hear the trumpets playing in unison, uh, they just sound different in that room. And I think one uniqueness about this particular cut is there are a few songs on this record, this being one of them, that we did not do any type of rhythm track prior to Orchestra Day. Uh, but we recorded vocals just to a plain piano guide track. So when the orchestra recorded this song, it was to a blank canvas. There was nothing there but a click track uh, and vocals already recorded. And for those that have recorded before, they would know that's a unique experience. So this would be my favorite song uh, to showcase the Abbey Road experience. took a verse of O Come All You Faithful. Uh, John started it out and uh, he just, he can just set the table vocally. He's so smooth and just delivers the message so clearly. And this track just keeps building the way that uh, Gerald and Trey arranged it. And I take the second verse and first verse is kind of light and soft and then it's built up in the second verse. And it just, it draws everyone to the manger. That's what I love about this project, is the focus is the Lord Jesus laying there. Oh, come all you faithful, let's adore him. Let's all gather and realize this wonderful gift we've been given. And then the orchestra is just like the support mechanism that helps us shout this message. And uh, Trey and Cheryl then arranged to go from this song just with a short transition into the first Noel. And that's when Chris just starts to uh, deliver that message. And I love those two songs together. Uh, standing there listening to this orchestra live, standing there, I couldn't believe it, in London, England. And it's nothing that can be recreated on speakers. You're feeling these instruments. It's heavy, it's wonderful, it's emotional. And I think people are going to love this cut. I adore him. Oh, come let us adore.
first Noel The angels did say Was to certain poor shepherds In fields as they lay In fields where they lay Keeping their sheep On a cold winter's night That was so This next cut is an instrumental uh, meditation is what the track's called. And uh, of course they do some ooze, the guys do about halfway through this, uh, but it has the alternate melody of Away in a Manger. You know, there's a couple different versions of that song, uh, but uh, this meditation is predominantly that melody of Away in a Manger. And it also goes into Angels We Have Heard on High. But I think um, what's special about this cut to me is we were in a setting that I would describe as predominantly secular, uh, with players that predominantly work in a secular music world. And just like the song uh, you just heard with the first Noel and at the end, all those players in that secular setting playing a melody that is proclaiming, born is the king of Israel. And uh, now to go to this meditation that is just such a powerful worship moment. I remember when Gerald first pitched this meditation and he talked about angels we have heard on high and the lyric sweetly singing or the playing and he said you know most of the time you hear that song they're not sweetly singing and it was just uh, I had never thought of, of that but that's so brilliant you know to listen to these lyrics and and, and it's like these instruments um, playing these melodies were in tune with what the songs are saying.
about a year ago, I was uh, doing an interview uh, with the guys, and uh, it was for the Gospel Greats. And Rodney Balkham asked me this question. He said, if you could only record one more song, or if you could only sing one more song, what would it be? And immediately I thought of, cherished that name, because to me it's just the, the lyric of that song just tells the entire story of why we do what we do. So I'll admit, I, I, was, I was surprised that um, Justin at uh, Daywind Studio was able to find our original multi-track recording of that and they were able to pull my original voice from 23 years ago, along with Larry Goss's piano playing, so that we could put it into this song on the second verse. And uh, it's kind of hard to listen to. It's, it's, uh, it's just overwhelming uh, still how beautiful that lyric and the music is on that song. No other name can save or heal No other name can cleanse and feel That emptiness within your heart No other name but Jesus When all have come and gone that name will still live on, so magnify it loud and strong, the precious name of Jesus. I guess this is my favorite uh, favorite cut on the album just because the message of it is uh, evangelical and uh, it it just kind of sets the tone for why the manger was there in the first place. It gives us hope in Jesus Christ and honestly I hadn't studied this song to really understand the verses because it's kind of written in like an old English uh, style and uh, some of the lyrics I love, like in the second verse, Jesus Christ was born for this. Uh, he has opened heaven's door and we are blessed forevermore. Uh, what a line. And in uh, verse three, now you need not fear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you one and calls you all to gain his everlasting hall. Christ was born to save. So that message with Trey's orchestration and Chris Allman leading this song just just takes it out the roof for me. I just love this. It is 